I think this is an absolute game changer. I don't know how excited they are yet. That's where we should be worried. We should be worried if our students don't know how to use AI when they graduate high school. Have we missed out? Have we? AI just dropped an awesome bombshell today called Study and Learn. So whether you're a teacher, whether you're a student, whether you're just trying to learn something, it's gonna absolutely change how you can learn those things. You see, OpenAI and AI in general hasn't done the best job at walking people through how to learn. Um, they've gotten better and they do step by step with some things, especially in, with math, it does a, a real good job, I think. But with everything, not so much. Um, it doesn't really follow that Socratic method. It won't quiz you like you would really want it to. But now with study and learn, it absolutely can do that and so much more. So let me show you a bunch of examples that will show you how, whether you're a student or a teacher, you're an adult, you're a parent, you're anybody that's trying to learn something and you don't want the answer simply given to you, but you want to learn it. Let me show you. So the first thing is you have to understand how to get there. So with all the models, it's there. And even on the free tier, you're going to see it. Um, and that's pretty amazing. So the way you get there, and this is the important piece is you just go to the tools and you click on where it says study and learn. That's it. As long as you toggle that, it's going to answer it in that mode uh, or with that particular tool. If you don't do that, it's just gonna give you the same answers that you normally would get. So in this first example, this is gonna be a math example. And I haven't practiced this particular question, so I wanna see what it's gonna do. Um, but there's a couple tips. One, right now you wanna indicate what grade level this person is. So if I'm in, in the sixth grade, I'm gonna say that. And here I'm gonna say grade six, and I'm actually gonna give the example. So here, I wanted to indicate the grade because that's gonna help help the tool understand how to respond to me and how to prepare this. And then also here's the actual math question. All right, a recipe uses flour and sugar, ratio of three to two. That's a big deal when you're in sixth grade. And, and then you know it wants to know, um, you know if a chef wants a larger batch of four cups, how many cups of flour? So that's a simple ratio. But if you're not, if you don't understand it, you don't understand it. And you're learning it, that's the whole point. So in this study and learn feature, let's see what happens. And so you'll notice right away, it doesn't give the answer, but it starts to kind of break it down a little bit. And the idea is that it is, and I gave, and I gave the wrong answer. And so it's gonna help me kind of walk through this whole process. And so what you can see it's doing is it's just kind of walking through. It's actually teaching, which is awesome. It's a great supplement to a, a real classroom or a to help a parent and help a student. And so I'm not gonna go through everything here, but you can see what it's doing. It's simply walking through that process. Um, I posted a video literally, I think yesterday or this morning that shows different ways to use it in math. And it'll show you the steps, but it doesn't walk you through everything the way it's doing here in this kind of question and answer format. And so in this one, this comes straight from my daughter. She's in the seventh grade or she was, and you know, she had an argumentative essay on TikTok and the ban associated with that. And she had to take a stance and let's see what it actually does for me. And so it's pretty cool, right? So the first, the first tenet of an argumentative essay was you need to lean towards one of the sides. You need to actually take a stance. And so I'm gonna say, and so it's kind of walking you through the steps to making an argumentative essay. So just like a teacher might, you know, teach in class and provide a handout, it's doing that same thing, but just kind of step by step. And along the way, if I get confused and I'm gonna say, I am confused. And so I ask that question, I am confused, and then it interrupts the train of thought and it, and it goes and, and is explaining more. That's awesome. And this is, I don't wanna call it a tutor because that's not what this is, but it's an extension of, of help that you can ask at any given point and get some really good information that's tailored exactly to what you're trying to understand. So my daughter's learning about independent and dependent clauses. So I'm gonna have chat, study and learn, help me there. And so right away it says, hey, like 10 question quiz, we'll get one at a time. And you notice I didn't 
set that up. I didn't say, I want 10 questions. It just came up with the 10 questions. It said one at a time. I didn't actually define that. And it's going to do some explanation there. And we'll do the first question. Although it was raining, I'm going to say that's going to be dependent. And it also wants a reason because... All right, so I got it right. I'm actually proud of myself there. But I think the idea here is, again, it's gonna be able to help you. And here I'm gonna say, look. And so there, you see what it's doing? It's doing some instruction. It's doing some additional kind of deep dive and, and, and explanations there. Again, that's pretty amazing. So here I have an attachment and it's for a study guide that's on the Great Depression and the New Deal. That test is gonna be in two weeks. And I the prompt is I'm grade 11 and then I, I need some help preparing for this test. And I want some flashcards and they get harder as I get them right. And so that's what it does. I'll see if I can get any of these right. I like that. So, you know, it actually gives you the, it gives me the answer. I I said, Hey, look, I don't, I don't know. I'm unsure of the, of the actual answer. And then it also gave me a, a helpful tip, which is actually pretty good. 29 crashed twice, 29th day of 1929. That's actually pretty smart. And then it wants me, that's a good strategy too, to actually type in the date. So I'll just do it October 29, 1929. And that's also a good muscle memory to, to ask that. And so again, I'm not going to go through all these, but you can see what's going on here. It is, you know, everyone's made flashcards before, but flashcards, if you have a question about the flashcard, it doesn't necessarily help you. But here, if you need help on any aspect of that flashcard or anything, you just ask that question and it can help you. Now let's imagine that you're an adult and you are trying to learn about a new topic. And again, you want to learn about it. You want to study. And so this study and learn feature will be a really good opportunity for you. So my, my wife knows a lot about somatic movements. She's an expert in that. And so I'm going to ask a question. So my prompt isn't the most amazing, but I just want to learn about somatic movements. I indicated my wife is an expert. She knows everything and I know very little and I'm more than 40 years old. And so it's kind of nice, right? So it's not jumping right into it, but it says, look, you might, you might already know a little bit. Let's see what you do know so we can then tailor the rest of the uh, knowledge or the explanations based off of that. So it's asking me, and I've asked my wife this question before, and that's a, that's a really good first question. Why do you want to know about it? Is it that you've got some pains? You have some other issues that are going on? That's important. And then... What's some things that I've already learned from my wife, right? And I've definitely heard the word body scan um, and pendiculation many, many times. And so I can talk maybe a little bit about that. And so what I love is like, it's, it's doing exactly this. It's helping us to learn, to study and to learn about new topics or to quiz us or to prepare us for something that we are approaching in our lives. So now I'm going to do one that's called a concept map builder, and I'm just going to pick a random topic. For this one, it's the 10th grade, and it's a concept map builder for the topic of reconstruction. Often you use these maps, they're, they're kind of like mind maps, right, that help us to understand better topics and, and to be able to break them down from a very high level reconstruction all the way down to the, the minute details. Now in this one, I think it went a little bit too deep. It just gave me a whole bunch and that might just feel like too much all at once. And so I'm gonna say, let's go step by step. And for me, I think that's gonna be much easier. And so that's where we're gonna start. And now I'm just, it's gonna break down those same things and make them a little bit more palatable, I think. And again, I'm not gonna go through all of this. This is to get you thinking of different ways you could use it. So in this next example, this is about helping a student write their, their college essay a little bit better. There's, there's lots of debates whether that's you know, legitimate or not, but I think the argument is they have access to this. Let's help make them better. And that's what the study and learn feature can do. So if you're a teacher and you're helping kids write better essays for college, this is a great way to practice doing that. So I had ChatGPT create a college essay for me earlier. And I'm just gonna go ahead and...
This was written 100% by ChatGPT, and I specifically asked it to write it in a very poor manner. So what I like here is, I think at the beginning, they kind of gave me too much. And then when I broke it down and said, look, just give me step by step, that's what it starts to do. Again, it's just helping me make this that much stronger and helping to put it together in a more co cohesive way, but not to actually do it for me. And if I need help along the way, it's able to actually do that. These are only a few ways that this new study and learn feature inside ChatGPT can actually help us. And there's thousands, tens of thousands of other ways to actually use it. But what I love is it's trying to help us learn. It's not doing it for us. And it can tailor that message to whomever is asking the questions. And that's awesome. That's exactly what we want. We're trying to help people learn better, ourselves perhaps, but then, but then also other people are trying to learn. And that's one of the amazing things about this new tool, Study and Learn, Tell me more about it. Tell me how you start to use it with your students or with your kids and maybe even in your job. Show it to somebody else so they can also get better. Take care.